Hey everyone, it's Victor again from Westview 3D Printing in San Diego, California. Uh, I just wanted to update you guys on the new frames that I'm producing. I actually did a bit more research and I found a, a frame that is actually a lot cheaper. It's a lot less time consuming and requires less filament. And ultimately, um, this will actually be in the long run, uh, produce more face shields for our medical workers. And I just like to share with you guys. Um, so just right off the bat, I'll quickly show you guys what it looks like. So this is the complete product. Um, this is the frame actually, just this itself. So there's a snug fit. It works perfectly well, up and down, side to side movement, all that good stuff. And best part is uh, it requires not that many materials. It only requires the filament straight from uh, your 3D printer. And that's pretty much it. It's not like the other uh, frame, the Prusa frame that I made. Uh, let me get it right here, which requires both um, the elastic part on the back. And as you can see here, it's a lot more thicker um, compared to the updated one that I found. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to make the new or how I uh, make the new um, visor over here. And let's get started right now. Okay, so the first step is to go to this website over here. Um, don't worry, no need to copy it. I'll put it in the description box below. And what happens is um, it will bring you to this website over here. And what I want you to do is I want you to scroll down all the way to um, where it says this link. This is the link over here. Click that. That's going to be your STL file. What's really special about this STL file compared to this one, which everyone um, already has uh it's pretty well known uh however the one that we have the one that i just downloaded uh has a bit of a modification to it so if you can see over here the this this uh, popular version over here has two two nudges on the edge for each edge and um that's a bit that's a little more complicated because um, essentially what, what, what really simplifies the process is that we can actually three, three, we can just use a three hole puncher to punch the plastic and we can just wrap it around right off the bat. Here we have, there's a little bit more of a modification needed, uh, which is why this modified version is better. Okay, so this is what the file looks like when you drag it into Kira. Um, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty sim simple. And let's take a look at the settings that I'll be using. So the settings over here, we have the layer height to begin with. Yeah, I set, the, set it around 0.262 millimeters. Um, this is actually a, a um, what's it called? Setting that my friend recommended. This is due to the fact that my Creality Ender 3, the largest layer height that can be printed is around 0.4. So my friend recommended me to go a little bit less, a little bit more than half. So around 0.262. Um, if you also have a Creality Ender 3, I suggest you choose to do this. However, if you have a nozzle that can print a larger layer height, by all means, go for it. This will, cons this will substantially uh, lower the time, time it takes to print. Moving down, let's go to infill. Infill, there's not really much infill needed. It requires around, around I'd say 20% infill to ensure that it's stable um, and it won't, it won't be easily break. Printing temperature, um, like I said in the previous video, uh, for me, my print, the printing temperature varies uh, depending on the filament that you use. So the filament I use is, uh, I actually converted to a PLA. Uh, the specific brand will be shown in this picture. As you can see, I'm using Soltec. And what happens is on the internet, I searched up that Soltec's optimal printing temperature is around 220. However, for some reason, it actually works better for me uh, when I print it at around 240 degrees Celsius. This is just some experiment that I did by myself. So um, you don't necessarily have to follow me, but for me, uh, 240 degrees Celsius is the way to go. And build temperature, build plate temperature is around 50 degrees. And I actually increased the print speed to about 120. Uh, right now it's printing pretty quick. I actually say that you can probably increase the print speed to maybe around 180-ish and actually increase it by a lot more. And obviously we want the cooling fan. We don't really need supports at all due to the fact that it's 
it's not necessary. And what we do, what we do want to make sure is that our bed is level. So make sure that the bed is level and you should be good to go. Okay, and then from there you want to slice the file. Slicing will, after it slices the, the 3D model, it should be really quick, around one hour and 15 minutes, uh, one hour and 18 minutes, so not bad at all. Um, this is actually much, much quicker than the Prusa. Basically, I can print four of these, these uh, up new uh, 3D printed frames uh, versus the one uh, Prusa 3D printed frame. So definitely so much better. It also requires less filament for each frame. It only takes around 14 grams. The Prusa one takes around 60 grams. So now what you want to do is save it onto an STL file and then transfer it over to your 3D printer and let it print. Okay, before I put my micro SD card inside my printer, I want to first go over the, the dress code store, if you will, um, when interacting with the 3D printed frames. So as you can tell, I'm dressed up with a surgical mask, uh, a lab coat, and some gloves. You don't really need to wear a lab coat. Uh, in my previous video, I said any long, clean long sleeve shirt should be fine. But we follow this, I personally follow this precaution to ensure that uh, when dealing with the frames, they're as clean as possible. Um, to begin with, we don't really want to transfer our bacteria onto the 3D printed frame where it can actually get stuck inside between um, the layers inside the 3D printed frame. And just cleaning that out will get really, really difficult. So why not just eliminate the problem to begin with? Also, I want to ensure that you have a clean, uh, as sterile as possible uh, environment for your 3D printer. Uh, this also applies for the same reasoning. Okay, now we've got that out of the way, uh, let's go to our 3D printer. So it's quite simple, you just take the SD card, plug it inside the 3D printer, and then quickly select the correct file, and then now we wait for the 3D printer to do its thing. With that, I'll see you guys in one and a half hours, roughly. Okay, so now our 3D printed frame is now complete. Uh, I will be showing you how to remove it safely and without contaminating it. So as you can see, the final product is over here. Uh, what I like to do is use the spatula that they gave us um, with the printer itself. And please make sure that it's clean and as, cl as clean as possible. And it's quite simple actually. What you wanna do is you wanna get the spatula underneath one side of the frame as you can see here you just slowly push it through like this and then you just slowly peel it up i like to peel it off from the the end over here and not the front because well the front is a lot thicker um it's a lot harder so i first like to start off with the easier side and just slowly work my way to the end over here now that popped off quite nicely and then i do this now I go the other way and I head my head towards the front and just slowly, steadily work my way around and ultimately it just pops off like that. And voila, you got your printed frame uh, completed. And now what we want to do is we want to store it inside a bag, uh, a clean bag. Um, to ensure that there's no other bacteria that will come upon it. Uh, here, as you can see, I've already printed some other frames and just quickly seal it up. Okay, so once again, I'm all fully dressed over here and the assembly process is actually quite simple. What you wanna do is you wanna take your three hole puncher and you wanna take your uh, plastic sheet, the link will be in the description, 
uh, of where I bought it. And what you want to do is, it's quite simple. All you do is just slide it inside the three hole puncher. Uh, make sure it's flat and punch it. And there you go. You have three holes right where you need them to be. And what you want to do is you want to take your 3D printed frame from the 3D and repeat it for all three holes. And boom, there you go. It works perfectly. Now let me just show you the example again. And once again, this is what it looks like. It fits perfectly well. You can easily shake side to side, up and down. It works just like the other Prusa one. However, this one is so much quicker, requires less filament. Overall, it is so much better, and I felt like I just had to share it with you guys. Also, I do want to make a couple of announcements before I go. So first off, I'd like to thank you all guys so much for helping us share the previous two videos with everyone in the world. Um, this is actually very beneficial. We got actually a lot of comments uh, saying that this was actually really helpful. So thank you guys for that. And also, I do want to announce that we were able to donate our first shipment to uh, the San Diego post office. So we donated our, we helped out uh, an, another group or organization donate 30 face shields to uh, the San Diego post office. So here are actually a couple of pictures. Um, that's actually pretty cool. And I feel like we can do a lot more uh, with your guys' help as well. So once again, if you guys can please share this video, share this updated video um, to the world. We'd like to just, like I said before, we really wanna get this critical information into the public so that we can actually help and save many, many medical workers. Another thing is that uh, we also appreciate some of the donations that you guys have been giving us on our GoFundMe page. Link will also be in the description box below. 3D printing these face shields and gathering all the materials is actually not cheap at all. In fact, we've actually been digging a bit of uh, the money inside our own pockets. So in order to offset these uh, financial, financial um, our situation, we really urge you guys to help us donate on our GoFundMe page. So those are all the announcements that I have to make. Uh, hopefully with your guys' help, we'll be able to soar above and beyond like, we, uh, like we've always been and hopefully get more face shields to the medical workers as soon as possible because of the surge is quickly upon us. So with that, thank you guys for watching and please, please make sure to share this video. Thank you, bye-bye.